Hello, this is a video tutorial for the electronic medical record used by One World Surgery for primary care trips in the Dominican Republic. This is the first version of the electronic medical record and it's going to be used in the early months of the year 2020. I'm going to divide this tutorial up into four different sections that's going to reflect the primary care workflow process. The first section is registration, the second uh, the vital slash triage section, the third being the provider station, and the fourth section uh, being the, the pharmacy. So what you're looking at now is the home screen. This is what you'll see after you log in with your username and password. So we'll start with, with registration. Um, before we do that, really kind of of all these tabs here, um, through the whole primary care workflow, you're really only going to be using two tabs. The first is to register a patient, and then that uh, triage station, provider station, and pharmacy station will all occur through this clinical tab right over here. So we'll start with registration. If a patient's been seen in the clinic before and has a chart that's been generated in the EMR, we can search for that patient by looking up their medical record number, their name, their phone number, um, or, or their address over here. Um, certainly patients may be coming back to, to, to the clinic who have been seen, but they may not have a chart that's in, that's in the EMR. We do certainly want to check for that here, but if that patient doesn't have a chart, we'll create a new, um, a new um, chart for that patient here. So I'm going to do that by hitting Create New. Um, this is the page for registration. You'll see that uh, there's a number of different kind of data fields that can be entered. The only ones that are necessary to register a patient are these ones with this red asterisk. So that's the patient's name, their gender, and their age. Their medical record number has both a prefix, which is um, our abbreviations based on Bates, the communities that they uh, that they are living in. So Bate Aleman, for example, is A L E. Now the EMR will generate their medical record number. Um, you can enter that in manually by hitting enter ID, but it's really recommended that the EMR does it, so it, so it selects the next number in sequence. I'm gonna um, give this patient a name. We'll call him John Doe. Um, gender, we can say male, male, female, or other, and then age, we can enter their birth date here. But let's say that patient um, doesn't know their birth date. Um, but they say that they're 37 years of age, we can say that that's an estimated date of birth. Additional information um, that's below over here, we can enter in their address by their neighborhood, their province, municipality, um, country, which is certainly the DR. If they know their national ID number or cellular number, we can enter that in here. Um, below that, there's some additional um, education details, phone numbers. If they have, for example, a neighbor who has a phone number and we want to add that in there, we can add that secondary phone number that's there. Um, some of these patients uh, will have been part of the Puente survey, and they will have a Puente ID number that should be placed here where it says Legacy ID. Uh, the final cool thing with registration is that we can add a uh, patient's photo to, uh, to their chart. Uh, that's a one-step process by just hitting this uh, button over here, this camera button. That will um, activate the camera application of the device that you're using. You're likely going to be using a Chromebook or a Samsung tablet. So it'll open up that camera, you can snap a picture of that patient, and it'll upload this, it, it, up, upload that photo in, in where this frame is. Um, so another uh, a really uh, um, 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 good function of the um, registration tab. You can hit uh, start primary care visit, and it's going to send you to the next screen right over here. You'll see their, their ID number as well as their name, and then you're going to hit save. Um, so now we've registered this patient. To kind of get back to the home screen, we're going to hit this, this home button right over here. Now we're kind of back at the home screen. We're ready to, to register the next patient, or um, if we're in a different station, we, we can start here. We can kind of find that, that, that patient through this clinical uh, tab. So now let's move on to the, um, the vital slash triage uh, station. So all patients that have been registered um, on the day that you're seeing patients will show up in this Today tab, or they may also show up in this Active tab. They show up in this Active tab for about 24 hours, and that's kind of where you see that there's more patients in the Active tab than in, in the Today tab. Um, but now we're in that Vitals uh, triage station, and we have that patient John Doe who's in front of us. I'm going to click on John Doe. That's right over here. Um, you'll see that uh, patients that were um, are newly registered uh, or ha have uh, registration dates that, that happen at a sooner time will show up below. So the so the patient who got um, between these two patients, Pierre Paul got registered before John Doe did. So likely the next patient that's going to be in the, in the triage station is going to be Pierre Paul, but we're going to select on John Doe just to be consistent with with our patient over over this uh, tutorial. 
So by clicking on John Doe's um, ID number, you'll see this uh, patient dashboard that shows up. Everything is blank here because John Doe is a new patient. He hasn't been seen in clinic before, uh, but this um, home screen or, or this dashboard will be uh, really, will have a lot of information about a patient who's been seen multiple times in the clinic. For both the vitals and the triage station, as well as the provider station, to open up a patient's chart, we're gonna to go to this consultation tab. So I'm gonna click, I'm gonna cl click on that right over here. Um, that immediately sends you over to a screen where vitals, where, where vitals can be entered. Um, this screen here, uh, will, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but this is where the providers will be charting as well. Um, you'll see some templates that are over here on the side and you'll see some tabs over on top. I'm just gonna stick at this time with that vitals triage station. So I'm gonna enter in some, some vitals for this patient. You don't have to hit, uh, you don't have to um, enter everything on, on this vital section to, to, um, to save things or complete charts. Nothing on here um, is absolutely necessary to kind of continue charting for that patient. So if we are not checking a pulse ox on a patient, we can leave that blank. But certainly if we did check a pulse ox, we can, we can, check, we can enter in that, that data there. Additionally, their height and weight uh, can be checked. This is using the metric system. So we're gonna use uh, height as in centimeters and a weight as in kilograms. Their BMI will be calculated um, once, we hit, once we hit save. Um, another component of the vitals triage station is at times checking uh, point of care laboratory tests. You're gonna go to this laboratory template that's right over here. Um, now all these are point of care tests so we can enter in a uh, rapid HIV, a fasting glucose, a random glucose, if they had a urinalysis. Um, some of these are free text. Some of these you'll see are just dichotomous, a positive or negative. Uh, but I can enter in, let's say, a random glucose, let's say it's high. And let's say I want to put in a comma that the patient just ate. I can hit this common button here. Although not necessary, may be helpful to, to say uh, patient um, ate 20 minutes ago. Okay. Um, and then the last component that I want to go over with the vitals triage, the triage station is entering um, any kind of chronic illnesses or past medical history. You're going to do that through this diagnosis tab right over here. Now, there's um, several hundred different autocomplete diagnoses. So if, so if I click here and I want to say that this patient has hypertension, I can start typing in hypertension and that will show up here. It's important that we're calling um, um, if we're, that we have one label for one diagnosis. So instead of kind of putting in HTN, um, that won't be as good when we take a look at, at when we're extracting data from the EMR to analyze. We wanna make sure that we're calling diagnoses the same thing. So I'm gonna say that this patient has hypertension and I'm gonna use that um, autocomplete option that's there. Now you may, um, it be a rare situation, but you may find that your, di your specific diagnosis is not there. You can enter in that, that diagnosis free text. You don't have to choose one of these, but, but it's gonna be re really helpful for, really helpful for um, taking a look at data afterwards. Okay, you can hit multiple um, diagnoses that are here. So I'm gonna say that this patient also has diabetes. Um, and you'll see that you can have a type one diabetes, a, a, type, two, a type two diabetes option. Um, these are not, um, um, as you can see, all ICD-10s. Um, some of them may be more general blanket statements. So you, instead of saying this patient has type two diabetes with retinopathy, we just want to say that this patient has type two diabetes. Um, you may have noticed earlier when it with hypertension, I click primary and confirm. You want to click those click those two button, buttons as well. So that really kind of concludes our vitals triage station. Um, very, very important that when you finish charting, you hit save. You can go between these, these, these tabs and, and, and your information will be saved. But as soon as I leave this patient's encounter without hitting the save button, um, that data will be lost. So a patient may go through the triage station, um, that triage nurse may enter in all this information and then kind of leave that chart. That patient may then, then be sitting in front of a provider and the provider will say, well, I don't see that you had your vitals taken. Um, it's likely that the patient did have their vitals taken, but, but that information was not saved. I typically like to go when I'm going between tabs just to hit save anyways, just to kind of be just to be in the habit of doing that. But that concludes our uh, vitals triage station. So I'm going to go back to the home screen. You're going to click on, on this kind of group of people here. Um, that gets you back to the screen here for all the patients that are active. But we're going to start back at that home screen. So now we're in the provider station and the providers um, um, at this, this home screen after logging in. We're going to go back to that clinical tab. 
Yeah, so I need to do a list of patients that are here. So then the provider will find that patient who's sitting in front of them. Um, John Doe came in to see, came to see the provider. So the provider is going to click on John Doe. That of course opens us back up to the dashboard, and now we have that patient that that uh, data that's been populated here. So we can see what that what that patient's vitals were and at what uh, time and date that, that they were taken. Uh, any kind of laboratory tests, we can see their their past uh, medical history that's here. Um, these are also collapsible as well. So I can, if I if there's too much information that I'm looking at, and I just want to um, not make this as uh, as complex of an interface, I can kind of close that right over there, or I can kind of um, um, I'll collapse that and kind of open that up to kind of see all information. But just like in the vitals triage station, we're going to go back into consultation. You will see that the, the, these templates are, are, are over here on the left. A lot of the documentation, really the majority of the documentation for the HPI and assessment and plan are going to happen through this history and exam um, examination template. Problems can be entered in here. So these can be, be, be the, the problems that the patient is complaining about. Um, like diagnoses, there are autocomplete options. So let's say this patient's co complaining about pain. I want to choose the most appropriate uh, appropriate option for that patient. If that um, um, specific body part is not located there, I might want to say that that's pain unspecified. I can add problems in, the, in there as well. So let's say the patient's complaining of nausea. I can add that in there. Um, let's give the patient another diagnosis of, let's say, headache. I can add that in there. Now there's two different ways that, that you can document your history notes. You can document that all in a narrative under here, um, or if you prefer to, to enter in your history notes below each problem, you can do that under under the, the, com, the common tabs. I might say that um, right knee pain started three days ago, does not radiate. Um, those kind of things. You can enter that in just below the problem or kind of under the history notes. You can enter in your allergies, your smoking history, um, your physical examination notes, and then your assessment and plan. Another cool function is you can take pictures using the device that you're using. This, unfortunately, this time is a two-step process. So you're going to take a picture with your device, and that's going to show up in either documents or the desk or, or the desktop. Um, and then you kind of click on this. You, you would find then your um, your um, image image that you just and you can upload that in there. Um, once you upload an image, I don't have one that's available here, but once you upload an image, it will also um, appear with a free text box. So if you do want to add additional physical examination notes, you can do that. So if a patient had um, a rash, and I think it's tinea corpus, I can say that this is a, uh, I measured a plaque that was three by three centimeters without bleeding drainage, those kind of things. But you can you can um, take those pictures and kind of uh, uh, enter those in there. Um, the other two tabs that the provider will use, we're going to skip this orders tab, uh, but the other two, two um, that the provider will use will be the diagnosis tab. So you will see kind of those current diagnoses that are there, but I may want to um, um, add uh, uh, other diagnoses. So let's say that headache, I'm going to call it a migraine. I'm going to add that in there. Um, and again, you can go between these tabs. Again, I like to hit save just to make sure that, that, that we're not losing any kind of data. Uh, but we're going to go over to medications. Um, the medication formula has been provided to us, and we've entered those those uh, that drug formulary um, in here as autocomplete. You can select um, if if it's not under autocomplete and it's a drug that's available, you can select uh, can type in that drug and use that drug. Um, but let's say we're we're I'm going to give two examples. The first will be a as needed med, and then the second will be some sort of regimen. So let's say we're prescribing. Um, acetaminophen. I'm going to um, select that that drug and say that the patient wants to pay. It should be taking one tablet, um, let's say every six hours by oral route. Um, you can give them the number of quantity that you want to give. So let's say you want to give 30. Let's say that's PRN. Let's say duration 30 days. Um, you can hit uh, instructions if you want them to take it specifically with food um, at bedtime as directed. You can leave it there. And you can add additional instructions in there as well that you want the pharmacist to go over with the patient. And I'm going to hit add. That's kind of an example of an as-needed medicine. Let's say I have a medicine that has a specific regimen. Let's say metronidazole. Um, I want to prescribe one tablet. Um, I want them to take that twice daily, so every 12 hours by oral route. Um, and they only need to take it for seven days. So I'm going to hit seven, and that'll automatically calculate that a total number of, of 14 tabs need, uh, um, need to be dispensed. 
Okay, I'm going to add that, add that medicine that's there. Okay, once finished um, adding adding in all, all your all your medicines, you're going to hit save, and that concludes the the provider section. Uh, before I go on, in case if there uh, is any kind of patient that has any kind of drugs um, that are for chronic illnesses, let's say again this patient had um, hypertension, diabetes. If I had antihypertensive medicines and I had uh, diabetes uh, or, or oral agents, um, and my assessment is that those chronic illnesses are well controlled, I want to continue their regimen. Um, we can just hit refill, so this gets easier easier as you go on. For those patients who are going to have multiple drugs for for, for chronic illnesses, if we want to continue medicines, we just need to hit refill. If we want to stop a certain medicine, we can stop, and then we can we can add a new medicine in there. So. Um, not really well visualized in this tutorial, but um, something that will be helpful when when um, when, when, when patients are, are, are coming back for multiple visits. Okay, so I'm just going to save again. Uh, I know we already did that, but I always like to uh, make sure that it's well saved before I kind of go back to the beginning. So we just finished up that third station, which is the provider station. Now we're going to be um, in that last station, which is, which is the pharmacy. Again, we're going to go through this clinical tab. Now the... Pharmacy is going to use these tabs up here, not these active patients, but these drug orders and drug dispense. This is just like your email. This is your inbox. This is your outbox. So we're going to go to drug orders. There's currently only one patient who's waiting uh, um, um, to get medications. As we get really busy in clinic, there may be multiple patients that are here that are waiting. Uh, but I'm going to be uh, working on getting John Doe's medications prepared. I can see that he has, he, he has two different drug orders. None of them uh, uh, prescriptions. None of them have been dispensed to him yet. So I'm gonna. I want to help, um, um, help him do that. So I'll open that up. That gets us right back to that uh, uh, that display that the provider had. But I can see that this that this patient's been prescribed metronidazole, 14 tabs. He needs to take it twice daily for a total of seven days, and then acetaminophen, 30 tabs. As I get these medications um, um, filled, I can hit D for dispense. So one, I can do that one at a time, or I can just hit, get all the medicines all together, hit dispense all, and then once I hand um, um, hand John Doe his medications, I'm going to hit save. Now what's going to happen after I, after I hit save there, after the drugs have been, been dispensed, is that I will not have anybody, in, or that John Doe will not, no longer be in my uh, drug orders in, uh, um, tab, in that inbox. It's going to be in that outbox, that drug dispense. So um, if we are unclear if a, if a patient had um, uh, drugs that were dispensed, we, we want to make sure we're going to find that patient. Now, I made a, another John Doe uh, just about a couple hours ago, but, but this is the, the, the John Doe that, uh, um, um, that we just kind of uh, um, uh, completed his medicines for. So that concludes the um, EMR video tutorial. You'll find um, in the description below shortcuts to those four stations, registration, vitals, triage, provider, and pharmacy. So if you want to review a specific one again, um, you can kind of just click on that shortcut. You will be provided a link to this um, e, um, EMR, um, this EMR page. You can enter whatever, whatever information you like. None of that information will be saved on the actual database of, uh, of patients. So um, go ahead and kind of practice in here. Um, this will be the same EMR that you will be using um, down in, in, in the Dominican Republic. Um, and then certainly on um, your first or your second day before, before you go see patients, there will be some sort of orientation process to make sure that you're set to go. Um, I will also include my email address in, 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 description, in the description below. If there's any um, questions, feel free to kind of send me a direct email. Okay, thanks.